Welcome, everyone, to another episode of 1500 Words, our weekly podcast here at Calvary Chapel of Johnson County. My name is Jared Clements, and I have the great privilege of pastoring the church here. And pretty soon, we're actually coming up on one year since my family and I moved here from Pennsylvania back in February of 2022. Well, I wanted to encourage you as we get started this week, if you didn't hear last week's episode, that you listen to that first as we're going to build on the topics of last week. And last week we talked about having joy, experiencing trials of various kinds, and God helping us to be more patient, and how he uses trials to make us perfect and complete, that we would lack nothing in our faith. Well, I want to read verses 5 to 8 of James chapter 1 for us, and then we'll talk about that today as we move along here in our study of the book of James. James chapter 1 verses 5 to 8 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. When we think about trials and difficulties in our faith, I think we should keep in mind that sometimes trials are placed in our lives by the Lord. And sometimes the trials that occur are because we've done something foolish or we've chosen to walk in the flesh instead of the spirit. Some trials that we face in our lives are allowed by the Lord to develop us, to help us to grow in our patience. And really, God uses those to help us to produce fruit in our lives. On the other hand, sometimes when we go through trials, there are specific steps we need to apply to our lives. And in doing so, the Lord can deliver us. So how do we know what to do or what God is doing through those trials? How do we navigate through a trial? Well, I'll tell you what we often do as humans, and I'm sure you'll agree, oftentimes we'll find ourselves in a tough situation and we'll turn to the most recent self-help book that's been published. We might turn to our friends or our family and seek advice And while some of these may not be terrible ideas, James gives us a very different solution. Instead of seeking everything around us for an answer, James says to seek the Lord, to take your trials and your difficulties and to lay them before him. And I have to ask today, are you doing that? Are you learning to take your trials and lay them before the Lord? And are you taking them to the word of God and seeking what he's already said about the difficulties that you're facing in life? Well, I want to submit to you that the answer, uh, the answer book that we should be looking to is the Bible. And, And we know that everything that we need that pertains to life and godliness is found right there in his word. You'll notice that James says, if you lack wisdom to ask God for it. Now, you and I may know a lot about different things in life. We may have a lot of knowledge about things, but wisdom is different. Wisdom is taking the knowledge you have and properly applying it to your life. We might even know what God's Word says uh, in our minds. You know, we might know these things, but wisdom is the, the ability to put it to practice by the power of the Holy Spirit. So the first step in working through difficulties in life is to seek the Lord, to ask him for wisdom. And then James says that when we ask that God has a certain characteristic about him that we need to keep in mind. And it's that God gives to all with liberality. In other words, when we ask of God, we can expect that he is going to respond favorably. And that's a blessing for us to know and to hold on to. The next time that you pray, remind yourself of this, that God desires to give to me liberally. He's for me. He wants to help me through these situations. He wants to give me his wisdom. And that word liberally means abundantly, in large or generous amounts, or in a way that is not precise or strict. 
In other words, God isn't keeping track of what he's given you. It's not like he's going to see you asking for help again and say, well, on Monday you asked for help and for wisdom, and then on Tuesday I provided for you and worked in your life, and here you are on Wednesday again asking for things. The Lord never says, sorry, the bank is closed. You've used up all that that you had for that week. No, God is liberal. He gives liberally, abundantly, without measure. And then we're told that he also gives without reproach. And to define reproach, it means to give an expression of rebuke or disapproval, disgrace or shame, or to have disappointment towards another. In other words, when you ask God for wisdom, no matter how great or small the situation may be, you can know that God does not have negative feelings about you. He doesn't think about you with reproach, like, oh, here's that Jared again asking for more stuff again, asking for more help, asking for more wisdom. That's not our God. He, he gives liberally without reproach. When we ask of God... I really believe it is music to his ears, because it means that we recognize that he alone has the answers to life, and that we value his abilities in our lives so much that we're looking to him for help. And maybe you need to hear this today, and I know that this isn't easy for for some of you, but perhaps you grew up with a father in this world that didn't care about you that didn't want to hear from you, and that gave you nothing of worth. And you need to know that your Heavenly Father wants to meet with you and spend time with you, and He loves to hear from you. And He desires to work and minister in your heart. And I just want you to know that today. If if you've had an earthly father that really just didn't do things right, well, hey, you have a perfect Father in Heaven that loves you so much. As James continues in verse 6, he says, But let him ask in faith with no doubting. In other words, when you sincerely come to the Lord looking for wisdom in a situation, you should expect and trust that he is going to respond. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. When we ask of God for wisdom, we need to not doubt God's ability or desire to bless us. And I do want to encourage you for homework today to head over to Luke chapter 11 and to go ahead and read and meditate upon verses 1 to 13. They're all about prayer and seeking the Lord and and having the right heart in it. And I'm going to go ahead and read chapter uh, chapter 11 of Luke, verse 13. It says the following, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Well, listen, if we're going to pray, then we ought to expect to hear back from the Lord. And notice James twice in these verses says that we should ask. That means we're not demanding from the Lord, we're not twisting his arm, but instead we're coming in humility and we're asking that the Lord would give us wisdom to navigate through the trials we are facing. And then James says that if we doubt in our asking of the Lord, that we are like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. If you've ever seen the waves on a a lake during a storm, you'll notice that as the wind blows, Uh, that they are definitely influenced and pushed about. The outside influence of the wind greatly affects them. And that's how it is if we doubt as we pray. Our thoughts are pushing us all over the place. The outside influences of the word can gain way more attention than they should. Instead, we need to look to be anchored in our faith and trust that God will respond when we ask of him. If you're struggling with trusting and receiving from the Lord, we ought to be as the father whose boy was possessed in Mark chapter 9, verse 24. And remember, he said, I do believe, help me in my unbelief. In other words, he was saying, I know you can do it, Jesus. I don't doubt your abilities, but my flesh is failing me. 
And I encourage you to honestly admit to the Lord you know He is capable and to ask Him to strengthen you to trust Him. Verses 7 and 8 give us the result of someone that doesn't ask in faith, saying that this person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. They're double-minded, meaning, meaning at one point they're thinking with their mind from a worldly viewpoint, and the next they're thinking with a mind in a heavenly viewpoint, and that they're unstable in all their ways. Let us strive to not live lives that are like this. If we will not ask in faith, trusting that the Lord will provide, we shouldn't expect to receive from the Lord. Now, does that mean that we won't receive or that God won't somehow show up, even though we're faithless? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think that's what it's saying. And we know that God is always faithful, even when we're faithless. But in anything that we pray, we must trust that God Almighty can do all that he wants to, and we should strive to have lives that allow him to accomplish much. Every trial that we face as believers has an end result that God is working into us. Even though those trials are brought on by our own decisions oftentimes, we should trust and know that God will work things out, that as we seek him for wisdom in any given situation, that he will respond. We should seek out the wisdom from above that has been given us through his word, and we should know that our Heavenly Father wants to work good things into our lives. Well, today, if you're facing a trial, I cannot encourage you enough to seek the Lord about it. Receiving counsel from friends, family, and even good outside resources might be helpful, but ultimately, the real wisdom we want to look for is what our Heavenly Father would desire to speak to our hearts. And so may we learn to do that each day as we walk by faith. None of us wants to be double-minded. I mean, I don't think there's a line of us saying, hey, I want to be double-minded and I want to be unstable in my ways. But oh, how easy it is that the world could influence us and we could fail in our faith. And I'm thankful that as we look through the word that James today has given us a remedy to help us to, to walk in the power of the Lord and, and to see his work in our lives. And that remedy is to learn to take everything and to place it at the feet of Jesus. And I can't encourage us enough in that, that we would be a people that when we face trials and difficulties, that we respond in a way that is different than the world does. You know, the world, when there's a trial or a difficulty, they, they freak out. They lose their minds. They become fearful. They don't know how to react. They don't know what to do. They don't know who has the answers. You and I, on the other hand, we have the answer, and the answer is Jesus Christ. And we have the blessing of having a relationship with him. And so, hey, if you have a relationship with Almighty God, then you are blessed and you should take your difficulties unto him. And so today, I just pray that we would learn to do that, to just take every issue, every problem, every thought, and just put it at the feet of Jesus. Well, that's where we'll stop for today. May the Lord continue to work in your life and and to bless you. And, you know, if, if for some reason today you feel that you need to speak to someone, or, or maybe you, you need prayer, or you have questions, you know, you can reach out to us on our website. On our, our website, it has a, a contact us form. You can fill that out. You can send it in. It'll come to an email, and, and I'll be happy to get back to you. I would love to pray with you, or, or you know, just to walk through something with you. And, and our website is, you can, you can go to www.calvarychapeljoco.com. And again, you can just fill out that form and send it in, and we'll be happy to get back to you. Well, may God bless you today. May, may he just continue to work in our midst and in our hearts. And, you know, I really pray that we'll just be developed into the people that he wants us to be. And, and you know, when we look at God's word, 
uh, and the things that he says about his children, those who have received him by faith, man, we're a blessed people. And I just pray we can grab hold of those blessings and walk in them and that we'll be filled with his spirit. God bless.